Gia. Put the Bali box to chuck. That is my go so do love. Listen that I'm back to feed you rest for see that you up here will love. So sad. Every day, young scared women who don't think they have options are choosing abortion. Preborn seeks these women out before they make the ultimate choice and introduces them to the life growing inside of them through free ultrasounds because of you and your donations. Help rescue babies' lives and donate by dialing pound 250 and say the keyword baby or go to preborn.com slash fearless. Steve, I want to spend a little time on this because I, I think it's significant. Uh, the Skip Bayless era in sports talk TV is coming to an unceremonious end. Uh, Skip Bayless, it's been reported in recent weeks, they've been drawing 50,000 viewers Oof. to Undisputed. 50,000 viewers on average uh, for the latest iteration of Undisputed. That's Skip Bayless along with Keyshawn Johnson and Richard Sherman and your guy, the, the playmaker, Michael Irvin. It just isn't working uh, the way that it used to. Most people... Uh, will attribute this to the departure of Shannon Sharp. I have a slightly different narrative. If you actually go back and look at uh, what's been going on with undisputed ratings for when I left in 2020, so I would say since about 2019, the growth of that show had actually come to a screeching halt. I could show you numbers in 2019, 2020, where they were backing up and not growing when everything else on FS1 was growing. They were showing no growth. It had already gotten stale. Shannon Sharp allowed it to survive for a time being. It allowed it to remain relevant, but in terms of actual TV ratings, the growth wasn't there. It was stale for four or five years in a row. Once, Steve, once uh, Shannon Sharp exits, then all the air is let out of the balloon and it starts crashing. And so Sharp leaving clearly damaged, undisputed. But my contention is, and I don't say this uh, trying to be hyper negative or embarrassed, Skip Bayless, it's just factual. The Skip Bayless era has been over for a solid five years. Solid five years. People were having this conversation years ago at FS1, like, hey, this isn't working, this, th this thing isn't growing, and it's always been my contention that <clears throat> debate, the whole debate TV era was about, hey, we don't have any real talent and so we'll just argue with each other. And people will just pick a side and argue with each other because the actual hosts don't have any talent. And so debate was the replacement for talent. Talk TV has always been about a talented host. And Shannon Sharp is a talented host whether I like him or not. Stephen A. Smith has some talent as a host and as a personality, not as much as Shannon Sharp, not as much as he thinks he has. But the, the whole embrace debate era has been dead for five years. Uh, Stephen A pivoted away from that, and that's why they have the assortment of guests that come on his show, and it's not built around just two guys. Hey, we got opposite opinions on everything. Skip Bayless, if you, and I'm not trying to, it was great what he did with debate, but he's never been a talented television host, period, end of story. And now he's getting exposed in this YouTube era. I, I think it's over, and, and Fox Sports has some real serious decisions to make. Your thoughts? Well, it kind of reminds me of that great old college football coach. Think of Bobby Bowden, his last seven years. Bobby had that great run for about 15 years. They were top three. They won national titles. They were the signature program for many years, decade and a half. But then when it started to decline in the, in the mid-2000s, the Florida State fan base and the administration had an issue. How do we transition to the next era? As obviously even the great – Bobby Bowden, dad gum, and he, when you lose an inch off that fastball and then it becomes a foot, 
it always becomes this really dicey, uncomfortable conversation. But Jason, in, in terms of why um, Skip Bayless and that show is struggling, obviously um, Shannon Sharp is key. He was vital. But I also think it's the environment. We are now into the new media slash YouTube era of the media and entertainment field. And when you have entities like Mace, who has a show that seems to be doing pretty good numbers, Gilbert Arenas. Then you have other networks like Dreamers Pro and Scap Attack, our guy. There's a lot more choices. And I think it's a totally different field. And Jason, I find myself watching short vignettes and bits and pieces of shows, but I don't know how many times I'm actually sitting down for an hour and a half to two hours to watch any program on television at this moment. I can tell you when. When when Cat Williams sits down to do an interview or someone okay. interesting sits down to do an interview, when Joe Rogan sits down and interviews anybody, people are watching. And again, this is why I, I, I and I, I got to be careful because I don't, I'm trying not to come across with an I told you so, but it is an I told you so. Because I kept saying when I was involved, like, Hey, this whole debate thing is dead. And so go look at Shannon Sharp. He's got Club Shay Shay. What is that? Is that a debate or is it a long form conversation, interview conversation? Shannon asks questions, guests say interesting things. What is Nightcap? Are he and Ocho debating everything or is it two likable guys with a smile on their face that are sharing stories and sharing insight? and having an authentic conversation with each other. I'm sure the same thing's going on with Mason Cameron. And so this whole gimmick of debate, it was always a gimmick. If you go look, and, and I was saying this in real time, like Tony Kornheiser and Mike Wilbon have actual rapport and chemistry and a friendship and a relationship that's rich and they have a conversation every day on pardon the interruption. It's not a debate show. And I said, but what, what TV, what ESPN and uh, Jamie Horowitz decided was like, hey, well, Tony and Mike, they got actual talent and they have an actual relationship, but you know what? We can replace that talent and a relationship and just have two guys argue and it's a train wreck and people will tune in to see the train wreck. And now that they've been exposed to better conversation and people with talent, because I'll say it again, Shannon Sharp has actual talent, and he and Ocho, again, are like the new version of Tony and Mike, and Club Shay Shay is like the new version of Arsenio Hall. You're actually seeing what real talent does in the television or YouTube space, and, and I'm just sorry. Skip Bayless, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but he seems so inauthentic. Gold chain. I'm best friends with a rapper who's 30 years younger than me. I'm wearing Air Jordan shoes. I'm a 70-something-year-old white guy pretending to be a 35-year-old black guy. It just doesn't work. Yeah, look, in defense of Skip, though, he's old. It's time for him to retire anyway. It is what it is. Uh, Muhammad Ali should have retired after he beat Leon Spinks in the rematch. Guess what? He had a couple more fights. Uh, Larry Holmes and then it was Trevor Burbick. Uh, most people, they want to hold on to the very end. The other thing is, even on that show, the, the makeup of that show with all those NFL guys and Michael Irvin and Keyshawn, sometimes he feels as though he does not belong on that panel. Like, he barely says a word. Then he, like he's in the background. There were 20 minutes he might chime in. And it's like, well, wait a minute. We don't even need Skip. We just need the three NFL guys. I thought the makeup of the show should have been basically Michael and Skip. That's it. When you started adding on all these other names, in my view, Jason, in that particular situation, more was less, and it became very much less of Skip Bayless. I, I said this years ago. I gave, like, hey, guys, I, you got a great commitment to Skip Bayless. You need to be loyal to him. But what Skip Bayless is capable of doing now, and, and this, I, I don't even want to pretend like it's my idea. Dang it, the name of the executive 
that suggested it to me years ago. I can't recall it. I'm sorry. I apologize. He worked at Fox Sports for a long time. But he wanted to do a Judge Jason show. And this was, let's say, 2010. He wanted to do this, 2009. Judge Jason, and he wanted, it's like where I officiated sports debates. I didn't want to do a Judge Jason show, and so I told the guy, no, you know, I still like writing. I, I got other things I want to do. But a Judge Skip show would actually work, where people came, where he, where, Two people came in and had some sports debate and Skip rendered some ruling over who won the debate or who's on the right side. That's all he can do. Putting him in a conversation with any of these modern, current, black athletes is not going to ring authentic. It's not going to be interesting. Because what does Skip do when anything turns racial? He panders and he tries to tries to disavow, hey, I'm not a 70-year-old white guy. I'm the coolest. I'm Eminem. I'm, you know, I'm a rapper. And it just doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, so Jason, that's what he brings. Skip Bayless is the two-legged white guilt. That's what he brings. And I just, but here's the thing. <laughs> but here's the discussion. I, If I'm Fox, I say, Skip, you've had a great run. You've done this for most of your adult life. You've, you've written some great books. It's not time for you to retire. Get out. Like, honestly, I don't, like, okay, he's declining to a point where he's no longer worth it, right? Well, Jason, this is the reality. One day, you're going to be jettisoned from the business, and I will be jettisoned from the business, right? Just like every football player is going to be forced to retire, they won't play the game of football. Okay, it's Skip Bayless's run. And whether you like him or not, he had a very successful run. He made a lot of money. He did make an impact, whether you hate him or love him. So the bottom line is, in my view, if I'm Fox, I call Skip in. I say, Skip, uh, bring your playbook. What do you do after that? What do you, after he brings you your well, playbook, who are you handing it to? L no, 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 no. You got, you got the team. You got to put a new quarterback in. Who's your new quarterback? Well, I don't know. I'm not thinking about Fox on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm thinking more about me. I'll be honest with you. I'm not combing the uh, uh, the catalog for a replacement. I don't watch those shows anymore. I, I'm just telling you, when I go to the office, I, I either read a book, okay, or I just go on YouTube to do some research, and there are certain channels that will pop up on my feed, and that's what I watch. I do a la carte. So you don't think the Angry Man or Scap Attack – or uh, Ticket TV should replace <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> no, Angry Man I like. Now, Angry Man, now, now, there's a guy that I will listen to for about an hour, hour and a half as he kind of riffs on a subject. But a, a lot of the times, I, I like to actually watch vignettes that are about 15 to 20 minutes long. But there are certain people, like Anton Daniels, he does like 25-minute bits that I really enjoy. Chaotic Truth, he does some live streams in the morning that are hilarious. He did one on that house party that Kamala threw. I enjoyed all of that for about an hour and a half, two hours. But I, as it relates to Fox, hey, they have a lot of people making a lot of money. Uh, good luck. That's your job to find it. It ain't mine. Thank you, Steve. Don't miss a second of Fearless. Hit that like button and subscribe to keep up with all of our latest content.